And, um, you know, looking back at the footage, it, it turned out that the bear, when he moved, what he was doing was turning around and just, he left, you know, he took off, he took off running the other way. Um, and I, you know, again, it was a young boar and I think that, I think that he just, he didn't know what I was. I think he was just running in to see what I was, you know, see if I was a deer or something he could eat. Yeah. Luckily I didn't look, I I wasn't wearing my deer, deer costume at the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that, I, they're probably just as surprised to see you. Yeah, he. I think he was. I think he was surprised. Yeah, because there's, there's not many humans out in that in that in that area, so I think they're probably <laughs> just as surprised. Uh, I mean, we don't have that problem in Scotland at all. We don't have any bears, thankfully. So. So, so what is bear spray exactly? I've always found that quite curious that you've got an animal as ferocious as a grizzly and then you're pulling a spray. I would think it would be something a bit more <laughs> <laughs> like a gun or something as opposed to a spray. What, what, what actually is it? It's, it's basically a giant can of mace or, or pepper ah. spray that... Um, makes a big fog in front of you. So you'd spray it. The problem and bear spray can be very effective. Like it's stopped many, many bear attacks. Mm. The problem is that if the bears come in from upwind, well, you just fog mm. yourself, you know, cause oh, you spray Christ, that yeah. stuff out and it's going to blow back in you, black in your face. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. not effective <laughs> in the wind. Um, yeah. but you know, if you can, if you can spray one in the face, most of the time it'll stop one. I take it that that's, that's not as part of your 10 items, is it? I'm, I'm assuming they give you that just as a precaution anyway, or did you have to select that? No, no, they, they give you, um, they give you certain things as far as your, like your safety equipment. So we all got like a medical mm-hmm. kit. Um, we got, um, uh, um, like a fo- uh, foghorn type thing as mm-hmm. a, as a bear deterrent, which I don't, yeah, no, yeah, okay. I mean, that doesn't really work, but uh, maybe it's a placebo thing. <laughs> but they give you stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah. And it, the, the, the final thing I wanted to ask, just run about animals, is the the fisher, uh, the little kind of wolverine type character that was kind of stalking your, your traps and coming to the camp and stuff. What, what was that? What was that like? I, I think, did you describe it as a little bastard or something at one point? <laughs> So yeah, the fisher was, um, that was the only, like the, everything that they showed on the show, I, I was pretty accurate to what actually happened out there, except for the fisher. Yeah. Like they really took that and kind of twisted it around to their own purposes. <laughs> yeah, You know, they made it, they, they used that footage to make it look like, well, he was stealing all my rabbits and I didn't have any more uh. deer meat and I was starving, you know, to try to create this tension, <laughs> uh, between um, you know, Biko and I, as far as being the last two out there. Uh, yeah. but in reality, the, uh, the fisher was really cool. Like he, he was checking my traps and that he was a little yeah. bastard for doing that. Um, and he ended up taking one of my rabbits. Um, but that was it. You know, he didn't, he didn't get anything else. And he was coming to my camp like every single evening there for the last, I don't know, 10 days or so. I don't remember exactly what the timeline was, but he was, I don't, he had never seen a human being before. And so he was totally unafraid. And so here I am in the middle of the wilderness by myself. And there's this wild, um, fisher cat. And they're, if you, if, if your listeners don't know what they are, it's like a, it's like a giant, very beautiful weasel. Um, mm-hmm. it's in the weasel family and he's coming to my shelter every evening and just like hanging out, you know, so it was almost like having a dinner date every, every evening. And, uh, there was one point I would, where I would, I'd be laying on my bunk and I'd leave my door open. And I would leave like r- bone, you know, if I had grouse bones or something like that, I'd leave them there by the door and he'd come and get them and just kind of hang out. But, uh, there was one point he like was he was going to come into my shelter. I mean, he came up, put his head in the door, looked around, stepped on the threshold. And I was, I looked right at him. I said, don't you come in here. 
because <laughs> who knows what would have happened if he'd have got in there. But I really liked having him around. Um,